first of all, to explain a little bit about the mural, um, I was commissioned by the Des Plaines Public Library in 2000 to paint a mural for the second floor of the children's room. And originally it was conceived as an um, 85 foot long mural, but it was divided up into three sections. And so um, there was, a, a, this whole mural was actually originally intended for three walls, actually three walls and a little bit. Um, and uh, actually even in the middle wall, there was once a fish tank that the painting was composed around. So, um, and then I guess, I don't know how many years ago the re renovation occurred and the mural had to be taken down. So it was put in storage. And everybody here really loved it and wanted it back up. And so I think uh, Patty Guilford and her team worked on trying to figure out where to put it and find a place for it. And they, and they decided to do this hallway and to reconfigure the mural into two big pieces. Um, and the biggest problem was is that there were sections then that that would be butting up against each other, that would not have a continuous, the imagery wouldn't be continuous. Even though I designed the mural to have a consistent horizon line, so you'd have a sense that it was continuing across those doorways. Here, I've actually had sections butt up against each other which was you know, too discontinuous, crazily discontinuous. So the main reason for me coming back down is to, um, reconcile those discrepancies and to invent new ways of making the image fit together in this new configuration, which in, there were um, three main places where I had to do that. But the very, also getting back to your first question, the very idea of the mural uh, was for sort the of children's wing. And my style of painting back then uh, was very much based on this kind of storybook-like narrative imagery. And so it was a natural fit to then apply my style to um, this imagery that would actually come from specific stories. And, you know, normally my work, uh, that, that I, I would make up everything myself. So all of my characters were mine, what they did, all of that. I didn't base any of my imagery on a pre-existing text. But for this project, I wanted to, uh, I had to really do that. So I read a lot of uh, children's fairy tales, stories, folk stories from all around the world because we wanted it to reflect uh, a, you know, the diversity of the world and the diversity of the displaced community. So you know, almost all of these characters have some sort of story or source to them. Although I freely invented them, I think my idea when I painted them all was, was imagining all of my characters playing these other characters. So, you know, I would, I would invent certain things uh, and take liberties along the way. The first section, this character with the bear on the, you know, this was my version of Harry Potter, this, this character right here with the bear on his back, which was actually one of my images from the time I would be like the bear on pups and stuff. But it also, uh, I painted the likeness of this Harry Potter character who looked like my nephew who was helping me at the time. He actually was staying with us and he uh, drove with me to Chicago with the mural. I'm from Texas, by the way. I painted this in my home in Benton, Texas, in my studio, and so we transported the panels up here. Anyway, Tom helped me with it, so I put Tom in the painting. But you know, here's Harry Potter playing with a puppet that's the Tin Whitman. And, um, you know, we have a, this is my version of Pinocchio. So Pinocchio, before he's a little boy, he's a totally wooden puppet here. Some other stories, the fisherman and his wife. Alice, uh, from Alice in Wonderland, but she's holding Stuart Little. So there's some things that kind of come together in a sort of pretty inductive way. As I said, the, the original panel had three big sections. And it so happened that each section was about 20 feet wide. And in my studio, that's pretty much what I could accommodate. These were all done on uh, panels that were four feet wide and 83 inches tall. And um, so I could accommodate five panels all at once. It worked out well. I mean, not all on one wall, but I would. I could work four at a time and then scoot it over and do another four. So I could keep it. It could keep it all together. And when I began the project. I, with this project, another unusual thing is I'd never painted an acrylic painting. 
my painting style when I did this kind of style was in oil painting. And much, much, much different. And I had never attempted to paint in this really thick, built-up style with acrylic paint. So I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to do it. Uh, when I began the first series of panels, then, I put an underlayer of paint on and I rolled it with a paint roller to get this texture. As I discovered in these first five panels, the texture was so numbly that it was really, really difficult to build up the image. It just was sucking up the paint. So pretty much by the time I got to the second five, um, I started to create the under texture just with the brush, not with the roller. And it made it go much more efficiently and a little faster. So that's why there's a very subtle change of that surface texture as you move down. But I think that when you come back, they're still very much trying to keep true to the spirit of that speckly scumbling. And I think actually, by the time we get to her and this character, that there is still a lot of consistency that, that's gone on. The real task that I had is that joining these sections together that were never actually contiguous with each other. And so this scene right here, this image stopped, there was a doorway, and then this image began. Well, it was interesting because when we actually butted the two panels together, they almost worked as it was. So coming down, this was the first one I tackled and basically made some decisions about trying to make this continuous, bringing the tree here, losing something else that was there just to try to make it make more sense. I had to continue this guy around in this panel. I had to move his arm over across that one. And then I invented this one on this trip, just some little new thing that occupied that space. The other real challenging section that I had to do, the second real challenging one, was um, the section with the, the genie. John Henry, originally, originally, the panel ended here at this scene. And the genie, this is Aladdin, uh, the genie was big. He was a big character. His head was as big as this guy's head. And it, and, and it filled up here. He kind of cropped at the edge of the panel, but it was really, really big and prominent. Well, it made no sense at all when we butted these together. So, I had to paint out that big genie, and to make it make sense, I had to then create, continue John Henry down this way. I had to do something completely new down here, which I did, and I can, this little character is what I invented on the trip this time, which is a, borrowing from a series I did back in about 1980, uh, about 1980, 19, no, 2009, I did a series that I called the Creature Paintings, a little surreal creature, so I threw in one of those, and then I brought the genie back as this little genie who's floating in this lovely lotus position above the Latin's hand, and other new additions, the cat and the little mouse. Um, there were other things, this panel here, this is where the fish tank was. And so it was a huge tree. This is the Lost Boys tree. And it was really, really big. I mean, the fish tank was, you know, four foot, six foot wide. So it was this huge tree. And putting it together, again, it really pretty much almost worked. And there was the window of um, the window of the Lost Boys. Maybe there were two windows. Of, of the, you know, window into the tree where the Lost Boys live. And then when we put it together, these two half windows really almost worked as it was. So as I painted it to make it work, I wanted to keep the sort of uh, strange configuration that happened just by putting these two fragments together. So that's, that's sort of a little ode to this process. Okay. The last section that I had to make work is this scene right here. Originally, the painting ended at that place. This, I think that tree came all the way, I think, where was it? Down here. I've forgotten now because I've repainted it. And then this tree began on another panel. There was another doorway. And then this was the last panel on the other side of this final doorway. So I've had to figure out a way of keeping this tree that the boy is leaning against and pull it back into this space and then turn this tree and put it behind that tree, although I'm kind of playing around with some things as I pull 
this branch that Tarzan's sitting on over that tree. So it's doing a little spatial anomaly there, but I, I think that's kind of interesting. The last characters I'll talk about are, are, are these, this whole section here, which again doesn't really come from any children's stories. It's, these are, this was really a note to my own children. I have, a, I have a boy, we have a boy and a girl, Christopher and Molly. And when they were little, I read them stories. I, I told them stories. I had a, a, a story I made up every night. And it was an ongoing adventures of this character called Mr. Squirrel that lived in this tree. And they did all these things. And I would, every night, I'd have to make up a new version of the story as they came in. And he did things with them. And so this whole last panel was just sort of a, a, sort of a tribute to my children's childhood and the stories I told them. And so, um, that's kind of the story of the of mural. I think it would be interesting to come in and explore all the imagery, wonder about some things. A lot of the little characters that occur in here don't have any story sources. They're just my little inventive characters. Well, it's, I mean, if my work has changed enormously since 2000. And it's gone through a series of changes. I, for one reason or another, I just kind of keep either devolving or evolving. It depends upon the view with my work. So it's always been changing. And so I've gone through a lot of iterations since I was doing these narrative paintings. Uh, in fact, now my work is entirely abstract and very distilled and very quiet. And, um, so to come back to this and, you know, there was, it was a challenge to, to think about it. I didn't, I just, I didn't worry about it too much. I thought, well, when I get back to it, I probably will be able to just reinsert myself, which I think is what hap has happened. I, I feel like, yeah, okay. I've been able to come back in, reinvent the things I had to invent, create new characters, draw them, stay true to the spirit of the original. It's been interesting. It's been, it's been um, a real, uh, a real trip down memory lane, I'll have to say that. The work we've done, we've come down, and I'm saying we, my wife Faith, has been with me working on this project. She's been working on all the little bits that needed filled in. Every screw, every new screw that was put in had to be painted over. All the edges of the paintings had to be painted. So. Faith has been here working every day alongside me, and we've just, yeah, doing all this little stuff. So, really, uh, Faith has been a big part of getting this all together. Great. Thank you.